Hi, this is Gary Goodwin, founder of The Stuck Creative, and welcome. This is a place to come for tips, tools, and techniques for getting unstuck, getting your project started, and getting them done. Today, we're going to look at a problem that's caused by a mindset, a way, a default way that we think about time. Our usual defaults are hours, half a day, a whole day, a couple days, a week. Those are our usual defaults of thinking about time. Those units come up. Of course, that's to be expected. That's how we get things done. We need blocks of time, big blocks of time, to knock out projects or to move ourselves along in our experiences and training. Defaults keep us in automatic. That is, we look in one direction, we're guided in that direction, but what's not in that direction, we tend to overlook. And what we're going to overlook is the smaller bits of time, the smaller chunks of time. So we don't know to look for small blocks of time. We don't look for them, or maybe we can't see them because the default blinds us so much. Or we just don't take these small units of time seriously. They're not a real thing. They're the, I don't know, excess off to the side, the scraps. What good are scraps? We're, what we're going to do is we're going to wait around for the real pieces to show up, not paying attention to the scraps of 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 45 minutes. We sort of stand around with our hands in our pockets, loitering about, uh, being very casual as though we had have infinite amount of time and energy and we just sort of ignore what's in front of us until and we're waiting for that bus to show up that says the real time on board if you're in a time rich environment that is your bank account of time you have large blocks you always have large blocks you have the blocks you want then don't worry about finding being able to see small chunks of time right in front of you and don't worry about you know putting them to work and don't worry about getting good at working with small chunks of time but most of us even we're not that rich even if we were rich we certainly could use more time we cannot afford to ignore these opportunities we need to use them to add on to a block we already have, or to get us started so we can do something with the larger block, or maybe there's spin-offs, things that we can we we just need small blocks of time for. We don't need an hour to do some smaller piece that will help help us progress and to build our project. I know this is a longer video and I want to show you what's coming up next to show you that it's going to be worth your time to stick around to the end to see everything. You'll have it all and you'll be over and done with and ready to start using short time. What's coming up next are the eight advantages of working a short time. After that, six ways to optimize and then, then we are done. There are advantages, real advantages for working small, working with small time blocks. It's uh, once you see these, it's sort of, gee, I used to think of them as scraps, but now I think, thank goodness, there are small blocks of time. We find that we can overcome certain procrastinations or blocks by saying, okay, I'm just going to get in there. I'm going to survive for 30 minutes. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z for 30 minutes. I don't need to think about that. I don't need to hesitate. I can get through that. So I'm just going to get in there and do it. That is easier to bite than to say, okay, I'm going to get in there for the next four hours. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to be totally concentrated for the next four hours. I'm being controlled of my emotions or my impatience or whatever for the next four hours. That is much harder to do than to say, I'm going to have everything under control, no obstacles for the next 15 minutes. These small chunks give us jump starts. They give us motivation to do things we couldn't do with larger blocks of time come around this capability of being able to work small and being unable to work big. So when we have small chunks available, that is a lifesaver. There's a technique called the Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro meaning tomato. The reason it's called the tomato technique is because a graduate student was up against it. He could not work, could not force himself to work in long sessions, but he had to get his what dissertation or thesis or something done. And he found 
he went into the kitchen, grabbed whatever timer he could find in there, it was in the shape of a tomato, brought it back as a kitchen timer, put it on the table and started set it for 25 minutes and said, I got to get through this block. I can get through a block. Apparently he was comfortable with the block size of 25. Set the timer. I can get through this. I'm going to just keep my head down. I'm going to keep working until that timer goes off. And that's the Pomodoro technique. If you want to know more about it, uh, I did a video called the tomato technique and the easiest way to find the video, which is on YouTube, but the easiest way to get to it would be go to uh, the stuck creative.com and look under videos, the stuck creative.com. All chunks and working in chunks that feel and that we know is not going to take too much of our energy or require too much of us helps us diminish the possibility of becoming overwhelmed, which is a big deal. It'll still be difficult at times to get to, into our work sessions, but I think over time we will learn that we can survive, we can thrive, we can do well, and we don't have to be perfect because there's another short work session around the corner or we can find one tomorrow. So if one doesn't work, we get stuck, we have to walk away, we can pick up another one. We, we can make it even shorter to avoid overwhelm. If we were facing long sessions, and if we got stalled out because of the overwhelm, which is really over expectation, it's expecting too much of us. We expect ourselves to go too fast, faster than we can, or probably anybody can. On, at, we have to go at the creative level, not the level that we used to, uh, that we want to gun through. It also is expecting too much quality from us, especially if we're beginners. How dare we uh, put pressure on ourselves to be perfect or make the greatest contribution to the world? Those are the two. Too much in quality and too fast in time. Starting off small, recognizing we're starting off small, knowing we can't fail, we can always do it again, another short session. I think we're going to escape overwhelm to have a perfect working space especially a working space that we've gone and cultivated and set up ourselves you know the artist with their own studio the writer with their own writing space and so forth however if we really want to get more done then we need to get good whenever possible to in addition working within our ideal spaces, working within spaces that we may find ourselves in. It may be doing writing in the car for 15 minutes or 30 minutes before going somewhere else. Maybe it's sketching rather than painting in the studio and so forth. So we become much more unstuck in that we're not limited to working to one in one place. We are creatives who are really activated, who are really unstuck and who really desire to work a fair amount of time of their of their day and their week. And to get those sessions in, to get that time in, we can do some studio work, but we also can do non-studio work wherever, at the airport, uh, riding the subway, waiting for a friend to show up. We're going at it. We're thinking. We're problem solving. We're doing something. We're making progress. We're unstuck. Working with small time and large time makes us much more proficient and much more economical with our large chunks of time. It's because if we're doing some small things, things that could be knocked out, not within our studio or writing office, but somewhere on the road, we will naturally start to delegate it, move it to those blocks rather than taking our prime time, our prime conditions, uh, our prime equipment and giving all of our attention to that which can be done elsewhere with less than prime conditions, prime equipment and so forth. So we become much, we put an economy on our time and we weigh it from not only time, but how much energy we're going to have, how much we're going to be in the flow or in the proper mind state for a longer session, let's say, and that which doesn't require those same conditions. So we start to sort what our tasks are. Small units of time are great amounts of time for 
quick experiments, testing out a new uh, medium, testing out some ideas or a location or uh, dialogue. And we know it's going to be finite. We get in there. We're free to experiment. We're not going to be investing large chunks of time. And we may discover with these experiments, well, we will discover what works, what doesn't work, what is worthy of going on and investing more time in, or we just cut our losses and say, we've done the experiment, no more time. We're not going to certainly burn up a valuable time within a larger block of time. We're going to get this over and done with, mark it off the list. Again, the economics, it's much more economical to do experiments and these other things, get to a quick decision point, go or no go, than to burn up our more valuable time. This filtering of what we can get done in large blocks and what we should be doing in small blocks will also start to reveal certain processes, certain things that usually they're simple, usually they're very direct, but they might be delegatable. Now, we usually think that we have to do everything our, ourselves, but thinking about time, thinking about how to use small blocks and big blocks, and then identifying tasks that, you know, someone could help me with this, or I could uh, pay a small amount, or there's some way I could delegate this, I could barter, but just get it off of my list of things to do. Those sort of opportunities would naturally occur as we use smaller chunks contrasted with large blocks of time. Three, it's much easier to move a small block of time than a large one. If a large one's three, four, five hours, that's we're going to be limited where we can move that in our day. If we're dealing with small blocks, 15 minutes, we miss it in the morning, we pick it up early afternoon, or we could push it to late afternoon or early evening. The likelihood that we can follow through on the small blocks is much higher than with the larger blocks, so we keep progress going. Before we finish up our listing of the advantages of working with small blocks of time, I have one more, actually it's three that I combined in one because they're very similar in nature. The first one is staying connected to our work. If we can stay connected, meaning that we know what's going on, we know what's coming up next in our work, at least in general terms, we know where we've been. So the map in our mind is there, where we've been, where we're going, where we're shooting to end up stays clear in our mind. If we take time off, it becomes far less clear and we lose the momentum, we lose the concentration focus that we work so hard uh, to develop and to uh, hold on our project. Related to that, we stay engaged with what's on the map of what's, what's ahead and we stay engaged in the sense that we know what the purpose is of what we're trying to achieve. What is the purpose? What what do we get out of it? Well, at a deeper level as well as, you know, more general level. One is staying connected to know what's what the map is, where we've been, we are where we are now, where we're going. The other one is getting our heart and keeping it engaged, keeping it positively valuing what we're working on, not getting lost, not getting to the point of saying, well, what's the value of this? Why am I doing this? If we stay engaged, the answer is in the work. And if we're consistent, which is the last one, consistently showing up, doing at least some work, we know where we're at on the map, our heart is invested and knows where it is, and we stay consistent and we stay progressing and we stay getting uh, stronger and we have clarity in our mind what progress we're making, uh, where we need to develop more, and the promise of what will happen at the end of the project when we uh, can say we're done. With small blocks of time, we can't mess around. We gotta get right down to it. Here are a few tips on how to optimize the time that you have, how to make these small work sessions more successful for you and to get a lot done. The best ways to optimize anything is to go with what you're already good at. And that is a well-worn path, uh, uh, existing habit and building upon that. Now it's highly likely that you have favorite uh, time blocks that come to mind or you default to. Some people have a default of 15 minutes, but would hesitate if, and even a stutter is a resistance, and we don't, we don't want any of that. We want smooth sailing the entire way. 
So if someone says, well, how about working 20 minutes? Even though it's five minutes longer than their favorite time block, there's a resistance against it. Or if someone says, how about 23 and a half minutes? There's gonna be a resistance. So go with your favored time block size. That could be five, it could be 10, it could be 15, it could be six or it could be eight, whatever it is. Some people will put in extra time just because they're comfortable with the time block size. Someone say, um, you know, how about 20 minutes or 25? No, I'm either going to do 15 minutes or go away and produce 15 more minutes. It's either going to be 15 minute mark or 30 minute mark. Well, you're going to be working longer. No problem. I'm just more comfortable with those two chunks. So look for your favorites or make a favorite within the under the hour time uh, that might be available to you way to optimize the time available to you in lowering the resistance and making it smooth to get into it is make it comfortable. If you're in a situation where you can add some background music or your favorite coffee or tea or uh, being able to look out a window or going outside, whatever, or having uh, being around other people, whatever works for you that adds comfort to that small block, set it up and get there and make it happen. You just might as well be comfortable and it will make it a more positive experience which lowers resistance, which increases jumping into things. We should make the intention, state it to ourselves and hold it, that we're going to jump into our work session. That this is an opportunity, we don't want to pass it up, we don't want to hesitate, we want to just jump in. Now if we hold that intention, if we make that a, a statement to ourselves, and maybe even visualizing jumping into a lake or you know, taking off and running fast, eventually, as we approach that quick work session, this will come to mind and we'll be able to flow into it and actually jump into it. So step one is, you know, hold the intention. I'm gonna jump into my work sessions without hesitation, I'm going to get right down to it because I only have so much time and I don't want to lose this opportunity. Make those statements to yourself, uh, feel it in your heart, and then jump in to the work session. Do that each time and it will be much easier the next time to jump in. Word about intentions. This is a good point to stop and recognize that this may be a new way of working for you larger blocks and then grabbing a couple blocks each and every day and knocking them out. Visualize yourself and recognize yourself. This is it. This is how you work. This is part of your process. Uh, bring it to your identity. Make it part of your creative identity. This is part of my work process. I got large blocks. Some days I have large blocks. Sometimes it's a couple times a week. But every day I'm knocking out some smaller pieces. So I'm distributed across time but this is my process I identify with this um, this is me grabbing small blocks and continuing to work in large blocks that is my creative life but we can jump into something but if there's not a plan of what we're gonna do once we're there or we're not prepared we don't have the equipment the tools all the stuff around or the people around we're gonna lose time in a short work session. We can't afford to do that. I'm not saying hours of preparation, but think ahead, know what you're going to do. You might do this the day before, you might do it at the end of a longer work session, but have a little work plan, what you hope to achieve, and make sure it's simple, make sure it's doable, and then have what you need to, to have uh, the session start and continue and finish up. Have it all ready, done, when you whip that door open. And just a couple last things. Since you're going to be in a short session, bring your best concentration. Focus on what you're there for. Bring your best concentration, knowing that you're going to be there 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Don't multitask. Make this session strictly about what you're wanting to do. And lastly, 
stay in the full length of the session. Even if you are wanting to jump out, even if you uh, bumped into some difficulties, uh, we need to learn to bring our concentration, learn to shut off multitasking, and to put in our time. That will really benefit us later, and every work session that we do that, the next one will be easier, and the one after that will be easier to concentrate, to not multitask, and to stay in the session. I wish someone had grabbed me and pulled me aside and taught me the power of small blocks of time and how to optimize them, how to see them in different ways. I think you're in pretty good shape now to at least try it out. So for the next week or two, see if I'm right. See if you can uncover the advantages of small blocks of time. Don't overlook them. If you're interested in getting unstuck and staying unstuck and getting your projects done at last, you'll find much more material over at thestuckcreative.com and you certainly are welcome to come and visit. This is Gary Goodwin, founder of thestuckcreative.com and I will see you next time. Thank you for being here.